How do biological and computational perceptions differ? With the recent advances in computer vision, an increasing amount of attention has been paid towards automation with perceptive capabilities that match or even surpass human vision. How does the current state of the art of computational vision compare to biological vision? Over the past few years, modern technology has seen an unprecedented rate of progress in both the quality and the speed of processing data. It is no secret that a large portion of this progress is due to studying and modeling biological systems. While a large percentage of the human visual processing pipeline remains a mystery, the better understood parts of our vision have significantly influenced the development of computational algorithms in the quest to mimic our amazing brain. So the natural question arises, how exactly do biological and computational perceptions compare in the modern era? The brain, unsurprisingly, is our biological vision processing hardware. While other areas of the brain also contribute to the brain, such as the retinal ganglion cells and the lateral geniculate nucleus, the bulk of our vision processing occurs on the visual cortex. The visual cortex is the biological powerhouse of extracting semantic information from visual information. This region of the brain takes about 30% of the cortex, two-thirds the electrical activity, and overall serves as one of the most prominent processing nodes in the brain. While the net computing capability of the brain is under dispute and has a large variance, an estimate is about the equivalent of tw 20 to the 10 to the 15 flops, or floating point operations. How does this compare to modern compute hardware? Modern computer vision has truly blossomed with the advent of increasingly high-performance modern hardware. Starting from computational models deployed on the CPUs, the massively parallel nature of vision processing, where a large number of congruent operations are applied on arrays of data, allowed utilization of GPUs, or graphical processing units, for accelerated computing. While some large-scale supercomputers and compute clusters have conceivably reached the processing capability of the brain, commercially available compute hardware is yet to match the level of the brain. The recently announced NVIDIA RTX 2080 boasts 14,231 gigaflops, three orders of magnitude less than that of the brain. All in all, still a long ways to go, but not far from there compared to a few decades ago. How about the sensor? Sensing of the environment starts from the data entry point. For automation and robotic systems, this would be the camera. For humans, this is the eye. Traditionally, the eye has been considered one of the key sensory organs of the body. It is the fundamental mechanism by which the information about the world is gathered at a distance. The camera has mostly been designed to replicate the experience of this eye. As such, there exist a large number of parallels between the two systems. The lens, for instance, assumed the role of controlling the focal length in either case. The iris or the aperture in both devices acts as the mechanism by which the amount of light input is controlled, whereas the camera might consist of CCDs that are regularly interlaced to perceive spectra in primarily the red, green, and blue frequencies. The human eye is composed of two types of photoreceptors, which are the rods that are sensitive to scene intensity, and the three cones which are sensitive to color and very good at perceiving at high acuity. After a series of such filters, the light would reach to the retina of the eye, which is analogous to the film of the camera where the visual image is captured. As we compare analogs in biological and computational sensors, a natural question might arise. How does the quality of the images produced by these two systems compare? A popular metric by which we've determined the quality of digital cameras, such as smartphones or DSLRs, is its resolution. Often a camera may be advertised as 4MP, indicating that it is capable of capturing frames at 4 megapixels, which are 2560 by 1440 pixels images. How would our biological eye fare to this metric? With a quick calculation considering the acuity of the eye and the sharpness of the resolution, we can preliminarily conclude that our eye is approximately equivalent to a staggering 576 megapixel camera. And of course, this is an overestimate that glosses over a lot of details. But considering that our eye can operate up to 1,000 frames per second, it is tempting to believe that we process up to 576 gigapixels of information per second, more than the size of most people's hard drives. How do we cope with such a large influx of data? Well, part of the answer is that we don't. In fact, we achieve such high acuity at faster data rates by utilizing what is called foveal vision. The fovea is the region of the eye with a high density of photoreceptor cones, such that the central region of our field of view is disproportionately represented at a much higher density. Whereas we might perceive we are seeing the whole scene at any given moment, this is in fact a reconstructed rendering of the scene by the brain 
through an intricate series of visual mechanisms such as cicading. Unlike a camera which more or less holds an equivalent amount of information regardless of the region in the field of view, the fovea of the eye is capable of much higher resolution and information density in some regions compared to others. This mechanism boosts the computational efficiency of processing, such as object recognition, in human vision. Delving into a bit of an interesting case study, in yet another example of success in biomimicry, a critical development in recent DNN, or deep neural network systems, has been the introduction of attention mechanisms. This is to identify regions of critical importance in the scenes for a particular objective, such as the semantic description of the image, and to weight the observation based on such an insight. The other part of the equation to achieving rapid performance is the sequential reduction of information. Unstructured scene data, meaning that it has not been compressed at all, or reduced to patterns, can be quite massive. A typical high-resolution image can range from a few megabytes to even gigabytes at the extreme. For computational efficiency, this is first transformed into reduced representations, consisting of primitives such as color, shape, and motion descriptors. In a hierarchical processing pipeline, features of different semantic and ge geometric scale are sequentially processed at different layers. At the lowest layer, one might perceive a localized, fine detail texture in line edge features of the scene, where at the highest, a more semantic description such as the object category might be identified with the wider receptive field. In fact, the way that the visual cortex processes the information had been the foundational motivation behind the development of modern convolutional neural networks in artificial intelligence systems. How good of a model are CNNs to the brain? In this case, there may exist a direct analog between the two systems. In a recent study, they have found strong evidence that the neural network model is a close parallel to how we process visual information biologically. In particular, the gamma frequency component of the brain in visual processing has been shown to highly correlate with the neural network tasks with a similar objective, further confirming that this kind of hierarchical feature representation closely models how we process information. As a bit of a mathematical tangent, let us observe how the geometric features are computed in this manner. We have a relatively good understanding of the interactions that happen at earlier stages of neural networks, both artificial and biological. Indeed, color and edge detections that form the foundational visual features that in aggregate contribute to, de that in aggregate contribute to a deeper understanding of the environment occur in biological systems at a stage as early as ganglion cells and the primary visual cortex, serving as the first step in biological perceptive processing pipeline. One of the primary feature processing techniques that happens at the beginning of the visual processing pipeline in the brain is the computation of gradients. Why? The prevalent hypothesis among researchers is that this is an efficient encoding of the natural image. While a large portion of the visual processes remain unknown, this is an example of a strong parallel between the primitive feature processing of edge detection in the V1 or the primary visual cortex region of the brain and the classical object classification algorithms such as cascaded Haar classifiers. In V1 receptive fields, there are two main cortical cells, simple and complex. As the name suggests, the simple cell detects oriented bars and edges at a specific location, while complex cells are sensitive to orientation but invariant to position. When scientists look at the patterns of receptive fields as, as detected by the simple cells, they observed a strong correlation with those employed by classical Haar feature-based object recognition algorithms. What's more, there is a well-characterized model of how these biological processes occur, namely the excitation inhibition patterns that constitute the biological process by which we compute gradients. In the process from the input to the output, applying inhibitory signals to neighboring neurons at a distance allows for a cluster of neurons to highlight contrasting regions in an image. This is computationally equivalent to the Laplacian, which is the divergence of the gradient. So far, we have addressed ways in which there existed close parallels in biological and computational vision systems, but how are they different? A recent study has shown that human perception is primarily shape-based, while computational pipelines have been texture-based. 
and demonstrated that networks boost in performance after given additional criteria to employ a more human-like inference on images, closing the gap between machine and human vision. Compared to our vision, which is an effortless experience we undergo every day, it is quite clear that computational vision has still a long way to go. Even in modern systems, numerous problems such as domain limitations, adaptability, overfitting, data efficiency, computational performance and robustness remain to be challenged. However, as researchers draw inspiration from our very own eyes and bridge the gap between biological and computational perception systems, the future in which humans and robots share the same visual frontier does not seem far.